Gyms are open again. Many people are excited to get back into a routine or just simply to get moving after a year of not being able to do it. At the same time, restaurants and bars are opening up, giving people the chance to get out and enjoy their favorite meals. So as you start to get back out there, you may wonder, can I have my cake and eat it too? Mm, all right. Well, what we want to do is we want to talk about that in today's To Your Well-Being, a healthy post-pandemic lifestyle. Jamie Athis is the wellness director at Cone Health. She's joining us to talk about moving into that healthy post-pandemic lifestyle. And hey, you know, Jamie, just kind of like, you know, jog our memories. What was the pandemic lifestyle like that may need a transition? Sure, so probably most of us were spending a lot more time indoors, not moving as much as we're used to, or really moving very little, and also making healthy or unhealthier food choices. So probably maybe snacking more often, eating at a schedule that wasn't like our normal schedule. Yes, I think uh, as you were talking, we were all going check, 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 all of those boxes. <laughs> all right, so let's start with how do we reignite ourselves to do this at a routine. Let's start with exercise and let's talk about the impact that the long periods of not exercising can have on our health. Sure. So the first thing you want to make sure is if you've missed an annual physical, those preventive screenings, you really want to make sure you schedule those because before you start exercise, if you've never done it before, you want to make sure everything's okay. And then you really want to start slow. So if you leave with anything, I want you to remember some is better than none. You know, we often think, well, gosh, when, a year ago I was doing this, or I used to be able to, you know, run for 40 minutes, or I did a 5K, and really just start slow. If you can get outside with a 15-minute walk, that is better than none. And then, you know, embrace a little bit of soreness. This is definitely not let's jump in and, and go, uh, you know, all or none, but you are going to have a little bit of soreness if you have been inactive. So embrace a little bit of that soreness. If you can get outdoors and get some fresh air, you know, our physical activity and exercise is not only beneficial for our physical health, but has a huge impact on our mental health. So really uh, getting outdoors, getting some fresh air, it's going to also help our mood and our, our sleep and our mental and emotional health. All right, you Try mentioned to... soreness there. So then that makes me say, okay, when we are sore in that second or third day, what we usually want to do is then sit on the couch. <laughs> but it actually makes you feel better if you got up and you moved again. Yes, we call that DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And the best thing you can do is try to do a little bit of movement. It will help it to get out. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Um, do some stretching, but you're right. The more inactive you are, the harder that is. And, and also you don't feel so good when it's like that. So, you know, go into this slowly so you don't get so sore that you say, oh gosh, why did I do that again? But also, you know, the key is to just get started, right? Just go through the motions so you get a little bit of movement in. And I think that we probably um, have the negative thoughts that run through our heads like, well, I just can't do it or I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow turns into next week, which turns into next month. And already we've been sitting for too long. Definitely try to exercise with a buddy. So people that exercise make exercise social or more than twice as likely to do it. So maybe that's your dog, your neighbor, a family member, uh, it just anyone. If you can try to start with somebody else, then you're more likely not to be able to cancel it or say, oh gosh, I'll push that off to next week. So for people who may still be hesitant due to COVID-19 to get back into an in-person group exercise class or go to the gym, what advice or recommendations would you have? You wanna start with what's familiar and where you feel comfortable. So if you feel comfortable going back to the gym, but you still wanna wear a mask, that's fine. I think it's just taking that first step to get through the doors and however you feel comfortable. And if you don't feel comfortable yet, then start with maybe another person that you can exercise outside with, but you're, also, you're doing it socially so that you can, that will help to ease you into that next phase. Mm -hmm. All right, let's now switch over to food because eating habits, most likely changed for people during the pandemic. Uh, so combined with exercising, let's talk about the impact that not exercising and the changed eating habits have. Sure, it can certainly affect our physical health, especially for chronic conditions. It, it can affect our energy, right? When we're not eating healthy, our energy's down, our sleep, our mood can all be impacted by our food choices. All right, and 
let's then go into the healthy eating advice to getting back on track again. It's kind of like the exercise thing where do you just like, you know, do cold turkey for all of the things? No, we would say all things in moderation and just start small. I think the biggest thing to try to start with is getting back to regular meal patterns. So many of us, we are, you know, our dinners might have been much later. Maybe we're skipping breakfast because our pandemic schedule changed, but really try to get back to three meals a day and one to two snacks, N trying not to go more than four to five hours in between eating. And really the most important thing is don't skip your breakfast. So really trying to get back to breakfast or starting to eat breakfast if you never have before. And when you say breakfast, some people think donut and other people think like, you know, yogurt and like fruit. So somewhere in the middle, one or the other. Try to aim for nutritional balance. So ideally, if you can have some fruit, some veggie, some grain and protein with every meal, that's going to be best. That might not be possible for breakfast. You might not have veggies, for example, but that'd be a great way to add into your snack between breakfast and lunch. Okay, gotcha. All right. So other health benefits from getting back into that healthy routine. Yeah, I think, you know, you'll, you're, you'll feel better. So the more that we start to move our bodies and we start to put good nutrition, you know, aiming for whole foods whenever you can, um, you're going to start to feel better. You'll start to also then it's kind of one starts with the other. So maybe if, if it's too much to start with both, then just start small. First, start with the exercise when you feel comfortable and you've maybe met a goal of two to three days of your walk. And say, oh, now I'm going to focus on maybe starting with breakfast or adding more water to my day and just keep building slowly until you reach small goals. But you definitely don't want to overhaul everything or else it won't stick. We always say if it's not something you can do long term, you're not likely to do it anyway. So it really is not going to help your health. Except that we all get sucked into the, oh, if you do it this way for a little while, everything will change and be better. It, that is really hard. We see all the infomercials and the way everything's marketed. So it feels like, well, I could do this just for a little bit. But I always like to remind everyone, right? Willpower is an exhaustible resource, right? So <laughs> if it takes a ton of willpower, we're not likely probably to be able to sustain it very long. And really what we're looking here for here is lifestyle changes that you can really put into place and keep over the, your whole life. And whether you're on vacation or not on vacation, or no matter where you are, or no matter what your schedule is. Definitely. All right, and so mental health is a big part of this as well. When we eat better, when we exercise, that helps us sleep better, that helps us just have a better outlook. Absolutely, you're gonna be producing those feel-good endorphins from exercise, which is really important. Um, getting outside can help us with regulating our circadian rhythm. It can help you with your sleep. Um, certainly it can help you reduce your stress, which could, you know, that alone during this pandemic is huge. Uh, exercise can be a great way uh, just to get your stress out. So really the biggest thing is, you know, just start m with any movement. I always say, even if you don't wake up and say, oh my gosh, I can't wait to exercise because not too many people do. <laughs> just go through the motion. Say, I commit to myself for a 15 minute walk at lunch today. And then once you get used to that, you'll feel good and challenge yourself. Go for 20 minutes or go a little bit faster for that loop and just keep adding on, you know, very small. And we don't have to apologize for that. No, absolutely not. Yep. Small steps end up with big successes. Small steps, big successes. Thank you so much for joining us today. We so appreciate it. If you missed any of these ways to live a healthier lifestyle after pandemic, you can find these recommendations on our website under the two wants to know section.